Snowball up next at 11 o'clock. The search is on tonight for two gunmen who dressed like BGE repairmen, then pulled off a daring home invasion. We're live with the latest on the investigation. From WMAR-TV Baltimore, this is 2 News. Stories about real people, real news. are focused on Atlanta tonight as both sides start laying out their case in the murder trial of Ray Lewis. Good evening, everybody. I'm Stan Stovall. And I'm Mary Beth Marsden. It was a tale of two crime scenes today. The prosecution told the jury it will be able to follow a blood trail from Ray Lewis's seat in a limousine to his hotel room, while his lawyers say everything the Ravens linebacker did was aimed at stopping the fight that led to the murders. 2 News' Jesse Jones joins us once again live from Atlanta with a wrap on today's proceedings. Jesse. That's right, Mary Beth. Intense opening statements today with the prosecution saying it has a trail of blood connecting Lewis to the victims. The prosecution wasted no time putting Lewis at the scene of the double murders. D.A. Paul Howard told the jury that Lewis was a willing participant in the brawl which led to the stabbings of Jason Baker and Richard Lawler and that he drew his hand, his fist back, and aimed the blow toward him. And he'll tell you that that blow was a blow that was one that was down in the bottom part of his chest area. But Howard wasn't able to put a knife in Lewis's no. hand that night, or and no one saw Lewis Baker. stabbing anyone. Little and Lewis's attorney, Ed Garland, because saw that opportunity the will and jumped right on it that he did not kill or stab anyone. That he did not use or have a knife. And that he did not cause, aid, or encourage anyone to use a knife. Defense attorneys also attacked a Unless prosecution witness who claims he saw Lewis kicking one of the victims. Reason. The problem, that witness, Chester Anderson, is in jail for identity theft. But you'll find out he goes by different names. It'll be interesting to see what name Mr. Anderson uses when he comes here. But we'll ask him about his identities. After opening statements, an employee of a local was sporting goods store finger co defendant tweeting as the person night. who bought two knives. Um, I talked to him. I was just making a conversation, and I asked him, um, what are you going to kill with this knife? And he said, is that the only thing you can do with the knife? I said, well, I know you're not going to cut tomatoes with it. So he got a little bit upset, and um, he said I was crazy. Then Melissa Keeler, who witnessed the post-Super Bowl fight from her apartment, described on a dummy how one of the victims was beaten. I thought he was dead right away. There was blood underneath his head. When they picked his head up and when they picked his leg up, there was no response in his body. It was lifeless. That's right. Intense testimony. The problem is Keeler could not identify any of the attackers either in a lineup or in court. Testimony continues tomorrow. Stan, Mary Beth. All right, Jesse, thank you. And sports fans across the country turned on the TV today, but not for a game. Instead, they wanted to see the trial of Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis. The ESPN zone downtown was packed today as the murder trial unfolded on the big screen. The usual sports highlights were replaced by a real-life courtroom drama. And most of those watching said today they think that things don't look good for Ray Lewis. And ironically, as fans watched the Lewis trial unfold, NFL owners gathered here in Baltimore to discuss responsible player conduct. The owners are trying to decide what can be done to police off-the-field behavior of superstars like Ray Lewis. Pittsburgh Steelers owner Art Rooney told 2 News that individuals need to pay the consequences for what they do. It's up to you as an individual to uh, be responsible and you're accountable. And I think that they, the league does have to do that, make everybody accountable for, for what they do. Ravens owner Art Modell briefly left the owner's meeting for a telephone update on the Lewis trial. He says his opinion of Lewis has not changed. Well, do you think the NFL needs to do more to control the off-the-field actions of its players? We asked that question in our exclusive 2 News poll today. 65% of those polled said, yes, the NFL does need to do more policing of its players. 28% say no, and 7% said they were not sure. 
So what do you think? Give us a call with your comment on this or any other story you see here on 2 News. The number to call is 410-377-0933. When you call, leave your name, where you're calling from, and your comment, and it may be used in a future newscast. And meanwhile, testimony in the Lewis case solves a cell phone mystery for a man in Carroll County who's never met Ray Lewis, but certainly has his number. Scott brings in our satellite center with more. Robert Justice of Eldersburg got himself a new cell phone about six weeks ago, and he's been getting mysterious phone calls ever since. Today, he figured out why. I'm not Ray Lewis. I don't even look like him. Please enter your password. No, he doesn't, but Robert Justice's wireless answering service is filled with messages for none other than Ray Lewis. To listen to your messages, press 1. I, I was getting a lot of calls for Ray. I had no idea who Ray was. I had no idea till today. The clue came out in court. This is the, the receipt that you handed to me earlier with uh, Ray's telephone number on the back of it and Kwame's number on the back of it. The receipt is for knives purchased at a sporting goods store. But as evidence presented in a TV trial, the handwritten phone numbers were broadcast for all the world to see. And it started Justice's new phone ringing like never before. Some callers clearly thought they were leaving messages for Lewis, many offering words of support. I think it's kind of neat to have the guy's number, but, uh, but it's kind of weird that it was recycled that quickly. I've, I've had this number for a month and a half. AT&T is the service provider for justice. A company spokesperson says because of high demand, wireless phone numbers tend to get recycled anywhere from 30 to 90 days after being used by a previous subscriber. For now, justice says he'll just keep the number, and he says when people call for Ray, he'll say he's a little bit busy right now. Reporting live from the satellite feed room, Scott Broom, back to you. Thank you, Scott. And looking ahead, here's what's next in the Lewis trial. The prosecution will continue calling witnesses tomorrow. The state says it will take at least a week to present its case. And stay with 2 News for continuing coverage of the Ray Lewis murder trial. We'll bring you live coverage from the courtroom starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. And our live team coverage from Atlanta to Baltimore resumes tomorrow on 2 News at 5. In other news tonight, police are searching for two gunmen who they say dressed like BGE repairmen, then robbed a home in Bel Air Edison. The 18-year-old victim says she was held at gunpoint as the robbers ransacked the home. 2 News reporter John Rossett is here with more on the story. John? Stan, the victim says she was just coming home to her aunt and uncle's house here in Bel Air Edison when she was approached by a couple of BGE workers. She says they seemed legit to her at first, she says, but she soon learned they were not. I came in this door. And through this door open, I had already opened and unlocked the door and opened this door. And by the time I went to close this door, he was right here with the gun in my face. 18-year-old Siobhan Black says the two young men wore BGE uniforms. They had papers, she says, as they approached her outside around 10 a.m. at her aunt's home on Bonview Avenue in Bel Air Edison. Neighbors saw nothing. Where were you at the time, do you know? In my basement, uh -huh. and I didn't hear anything. Black, who says she works for MCI as a customer service rep, says the imposters forced her downstairs and kept asking, where's the money? And he sat on my butt and had the gun in the back of my head. And the other guy was around here at the washing machine, looking through the washing machine, the sump pump. But why the washer and sump pump? I have no idea. Finally, she says, they took her in an upstairs bedroom and found cash and jewelry stored in the master bedroom closet. He woke me upstairs with the gun to the back of my head, and now he sat me down on the bed and cut on the TV. And was like, well, I'm about to tie you up. At least you'll have some entertainment. And I'm like, no. He was like, no. I said, you are not going to tie me up. So he took me in the closet. Lawrence Owens, who owns the home, says he just moved in with Siobhan's aunt a month and a half before. Including jewelry and cash. I think the value was like $3,000. Siobhan says the gunman forced her into an upstairs closet and told her to stay there until they got out of the house. But before they did, she says, they tossed her a $10 bill for her trouble. Siobhan's Aunt Myra says they went out to eat on the 10 spot. Police dusted everywhere for prints and say they searched tonight for the suspects. Now, BGE says if anybody comes to your door and you have any doubt about them, look for their picture ID and you don't have to let anybody in Call the company if you have any questions. I'm John Rawson, 2 News, reporting live from Bel Air Edison. Yeah, Back better to play it safe than sorry, huh, John? Absolutely. All right, thank you. My pleasure.
Well, heavy smoke made driving difficult in West Baltimore tonight as firefighters battle a blaze in a high-rise apartment building. Just before 8 o'clock, a call came in of fire on the third and fourth floors of a seven-story building at West Preston and Utah Streets. Now, fortunately, the Jackson Towers no longer houses residents, and firefighters were able to extinguish the blaze fairly easily. No word yet on how that fire started. The teen accused of causing the death of Baltimore City Police Officer Kevon Gavin could be looking at life in prison. The indictment of Eric Stennett tops our day at a glance. State's Attorney Patricia Jessamy announced that Stennett will be charged with first-degree murder. Prosecutors cannot seek the death penalty because Stennett is only 17 years old, but he could receive a life sentence. Stennett was fleeing police when he ran his SUV into Officer Gavin's patrol car. Officer Gavin died the next day. BWA Airport closed two piers today after a suspicious package was discovered, and that caused some delays and lots of headaches for thousands of travelers. Flights leaving from piers A and B were delayed for more than two hours, and passengers had to be evacuated. No explosives were found in the package, and the piers were eventually reopened. The man carrying that suspicious package, he was released after questioning, and no charges have been filed. At Poly Western, the first of four finalists for city school superintendent appeared tonight to answer questions from the public. The trouble was, not much of the public turned out to ask. What might have been 35 to 40 people, including journalists, met Carmen Varela Russo. She's an associate superintendent from Broward County, Florida. Michael J. Fox makes a transition from actor to advocate in his appearance in Washington today. Fox held a news conference to kick off the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Disease Research. The goal is of the foundation is to find a cure for Parkinson's in less than 10 years. Fox has been suffering from that disease since 1991. Next on Tune is at 11, an exclusive look at life on the street. I could use a dollar, man. Got a dollar you can spare? We all see them on the street, people asking for your spare change. Up next, I go undercover and look at life as one of Baltimore's beggars. Storm track Doppler radar is indicating the heavy second line of thunderstorms I was talking about earlier this evening. It is moving towards the Baltimore area. Here's your first forecast for tonight. Scattered showers and thunder showers, 59 for the low. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high tomorrow of 83. The complete weather coming up. That's on top of existing cash back and low incentive offers on a smart new Mercury Sable on the full-size Grand Marquis or the VIP of SUVs Mountaineer. Look for the coupon in your local paper or see your Mercury dealer to get an additional $500 off. The Mercury 500 ends May 31st. Hurry, there's no time to pit. The only thing that comes close to the thrill of driving a new Dodge is the fun of saving on one. Now do both during the Dodge Drive into Summer event, where you can immediately knock $750 off your down payment on a Dodge Dakota thanks to this generous cash allowance. The thrill of driving, the fun of saving, and your timing couldn't be better during the Dodge Drive into Summer event, going on now at your friendly Dodge dealer. At Amco, you get a choice of warranties for your automatic transmission from 12 months to lifetime. Now, where else can you get that kind of flexibility and protection? Only one company offers these minivans. Now only Chrysler offers this, the National Minivan Savings Event, with up to $17.50 cash allowance or 1.9 financing, from America's most affordable minivan to one with unexpected luxury. No wonder more people choose from one family of minivans than any other. The National Minivan Savings Event at your Chrysler Plains dealer. Choose up to $17.50 cash allowance for 1.9 financing. Live in Atlanta, stay with 2 News for the latest on Ray Lewis. 2 News is brought to you by Mattress Discounters, the nation's largest mattress retailer who guarantee unbeatable prices. 
tonight in a 2 News exclusive. Stan takes an undercover look at panhandling. Mary Beth, there certainly is not a one of us out here who hasn't been approached by a total stranger on the street looking for a handout of cash, quite frankly. Most people probably consider themselves caring and compassionate when it comes to helping the truly needy, and many do donate generously to charitable organizations. But as I found out firsthand, when confronted in person, many of those very same people are not so giving when it comes to parting with their spare change. They're white, they're black, they're young and old. They work the street corners, the strip malls, the parking lots. Shoes that don't fit quite right, tattered clothing, a frightful sight. Their signs say, hungry, homeless, disabled vet. Work for food, need cash, gotta pay the rent. But who are these people of the street who need your spare change to eat? Bums, bag ladies, panhandlers, beggars, those are the names most people use. But in these days of political correctness, the proper term is street solicitor. We've all heard the saying, don't judge a man till you've walked in his shoes, so that's exactly what I did. With the help of special effects makeup artist Chiquita Park, I got a makeover no one would want. Fake scraggly beard, large dark bags under my eyes. Who knows? <laughs> Could be me someday. Could be you someday. Could be all of us someday in real need. Transformation complete, I was ready to hit the street. I could use a dollar, man. Got a dollar you can spare? You spare a little change so I can get a sandwich to eat. No spare change. Thanks anyways. My first stop, the corner of Light and Conway Streets, across from Harbor Place, one of the busiest intersections in the city. Down my luck, can you help me out with a little change? Can you help me out with a little change? God bless you anyways. Most who passed me try to pretend I didn't exist. Some at least acknowledged I was there, but still gave nothing. I could sense the disgust, the loathing, the basic fear. Spare little change, ma'am? Sandwich? One woman literally broke into a slow but deliberate trot to put distance between her and me. Only three gave at this location. Can you help me out with some spare change? Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Good people to help brother out so we get a sandwich? Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you now. Fair change, brother? Including one man who said even though he couldn't spare it, since I was hungry, he was giving me a dollar. He said he knew what it was like to be hungry and suggested I leave the dollar in my cup because if others saw it, they were more likely to give. He also made me promise that if one day I got back on my feet and saw him on the street, I'd give him his dollar back because he needed his money, as he said, like a hog needs slop. I promised I would. I heard that. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Have a good day. I like your jacket, too. The disguise was holding up. I decided to push the envelope and change locations. Next stop, Harbor Place itself, in front of Phillips Restaurant. Hey, spare change, Jets. Love to get a hot dog. Spare change, ma'am. Spare change. Can you help a brother out? It took only 10 minutes before one of Baltimore's finest rode up to me on his patrol bicycle. He tells me I have to leave. I, I didn't know it was against the law, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, is there any place I can try to get a little money for a hot dog? Any place around here? The answer is no. I got to go. I plead my case for nearly five minutes. Little did I know the officer was picking up some telltale signs that were giving away my scam. Despite the wig and fake beard, teeth too perfect. Despite the dirty torn clothing, hands and nails too clean. Despite the bottle of Jim Beam in my back pocket, no smell of booze. My cover is blown. You got me. You got me. You busted me. Stan, still while doing a little service. To okay. Series on. See how you guys are cracking down. Man, you cracked down good. Okay. Tell you what, give me 10 minutes. He agrees and rides off. I continue. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Very nice of you. God bless you, brother. Have a good day. Help your brother out. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Another 30 minutes goes by, hundreds pass me, ignore me, no one gives. Finally, Harbor Place merchants lodge a complaint with police. The same city cop that busted me earlier returns to tell me, story or no story, it's time to leave. This is one of the cities, um, you know, I've had projects down here, a lot of your tourists are here, and you want people to come back because it brings the revenue into the city. Right. If you find people are, panhandlers are stopping people on the street, physically putting their hands on them, uh, interrupting their flow of movement. Right. That's what it really that, becomes that's the problem. That's really aggressive, but that's where we do end up locking them up. Yeah. And they get to spend their night up at uh, Centralized Booking and get a free meal. Say the least, I had an interesting day. $3.77 in roughly one hour's time. And I want those who gave to know that money, along with a donation from myself and Two News, will be donated to a city shelter for the homeless and the hungry. Now, if you'd like to donate either cash, uh, services, perhaps some goods, here's the number to call, 1-800-819-4358.
That will put you in touch with the Baltimore City Office for the Homeless. But you know, giving money may not always be the best move. Tomorrow night in part two of my exclusive series, we'll answer the question, should you give street solicitors any money at all? And how can you tell if these people are for real or if they're pulling a con game on you? And if you feel you're on the brink of being homeless, what services out there are available to you? That and more tomorrow on 2 News at 5 and 11 o'clock. And now, we wanted to know how many of you out there actually do give money to someone on the street. So we asked 500 people in our... 2 News opinion poll, 47% of those surveyed said, yes, they do give money to people on the street. But 52% said, no, they have not given money to someone soliciting funds on the street. Another 1% said they weren't sure or basically couldn't remember. And we have a phone line, and I think it, yeah. it might be important to give because I think a lot of people have comments exactly. to make about the story. Exactly. Uh, we've taken calls and taken comments from people on the street all right. the time. Me too. The number to call if you'd like to log a, uh, a comment about this story is 410 377 0933. Give us a call. Let us know what you think. Very possible we'll use one or two of your comments on a future newscast. Exactly. And look forward to part two. Exactly. All right, Norma's standing by. Earlier tonight, he was watching uh, a line of thunderstorms moving through the area. Seems pretty peaceful out here tonight, Norm. Yeah, but you wait for about another uh -oh. hour and a half to two hours. There's a very strong line heading in our direction. Here's the almanac for today. The daytime high was 69, low this morning 55, normal temperature 76 and 55, and just a trace of precipitation out of BWI. There was a whole lot more than a trace precipitation in Litchfield, Kentucky this afternoon. A strong line of thunderstorms moving through that area, which is, lies between Louisville and Owensboro, Kentucky. Tornadoes touched down, injuring quite a few people. No deaths, thank goodness, but as you can see, it uh, ripped up a lot of homes, moved on into portions of Ohio and Pennsylvania, and the severe weather continues tonight. Now, as far as our storm track uh, is concerned, what we're finding is that this system has been uh, really gaining strength over the past couple of hours. This is what the satellite was looking like at about 4 o'clock this afternoon when the first batch of showers moved through. And I told you that we'd have a little bit of clearing, but another system was heading in our direction, and that's what we've got right now. One very heavy thunderstorm has already come through Carroll County, portions of Harford County, and it's now up into southern Pennsylvania. The next line extends all the way down into West Virginia, and that's going to swing through our area. But again, the most severe weather it remains north of us up in Pennsylvania. Storm track Doppler radar right now, looking at our maximum scan range. Here's the Baltimore Beltway right now. Here's that second line of very strong thunderstorms. What we're finding is this one thunderstorm that came through Carroll County is now making its way north and eastward into southern Pennsylvania. There's the Maryland-Pennsylvania line right there, just north of Rising Sun. As far as what is happening out to the west of us, just, uh, just north of Gettysburg, a very strong line of thunderstorms moving again towards the north and east, getting ready to cross over US-15 as it marches northward into portions of Pennsylvania. But again, that line of showers and thunderstorms is moving in our direction and should enter the Baltimore area around 1.30 to 2 o'clock in the morning with some very heavy rainfall. As far as the forecast map, this is what it's going to be looking like. The area of showers and thunderstorms continues to march northward during the day tomorrow. More heat and humidity move into the region, and that's going to cause another afternoon of even stronger thunderstorms. But the strongest one should remain in Pennsylvania. So my forecast again for tonight, showers and scattered thunderstorms, 59 degrees for the overnight low. Some of the storms could be on the heavy side. Tomorrow during the day, it's going to be a mostly cloudy day. You might see a few peaks of sunshine, but afternoon thunderstorms with a high tomorrow of 83 degrees. And the extended outlook for the next couple of days, well, once we get past tomorrow, we will see the sun on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with temperatures 82, 81, and 82. Evening thunderstorms on Saturday giving rise to shower activity on Sunday with a high of 73 degrees. Our watch and win contest person for tonight, Leonard Rainey. You've got 10 minutes to give us a call at 410-377-9914. If we hear from you in the next 10 minutes, you will take home $1,000 from 2 News. That's the way it's looking from here. Some very heavy storms on the way into the Baltimore area between 1.30 and 2 o'clock. Back to Stan and Mary Beth. All right, we'll get out of Dodge quickly. Thank you, Norm. Okay. Good enough. Well, a real thriller for the O's over the yards tonight. Scott's got highlights coming up next in sports. I like to leave my problems at home when I drive. But if I can't leave them at home, I tell them they can come along. They shut up and enjoy the ride.
shop Ollie's. This is a very wonderful store to shop in. I know the prices are going to be low. The quality is superb. And here's another great reason to shop Ollie's. A giant Better's air conditioner buyout. We have over 10,000 units in stock and prices that'll keep you cool without burning up your money. A 115-volt 5,000 BTU unit is only $139.99. Look for the Ollie's ad in Wednesday's newspaper. I would recommend Ollie's to anyone who wants to save money and get good quality merchandise. Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Good and cheap. reasons Buick LeSabre is the best-selling full-size car in America. Like more standard safety features than any car in its class, a lot of features that keep you comfortable, and now a feature to help save you money. You'll get a thousand dollars cash back on a new 2000 LeSabre because seeing is believing. So see how much more you get with a LeSabre, but which you can see a lot better at your Buick dealer. You know, for a couple of minutes, I thought, uh-oh, it's going <laughs> to be another one of those nights. But then they pulled it out. Yeah, I've been a lot of those uh-ohs, Mary <laughs> Beth. Uh, yeah, interesting one. I first want to say hello to the guys over at the Chatham Club at Johns Hopkins tonight. Spend uh, dinner with them and talk sports and had a great time thanks to those guys. The Orioles back at the yard tonight trying to snap out of a 15-loss 17-game uh, stretch where they've really been struggling. Didn't take them long to get going tonight. Brady, fastball down the boom, leadoff homer. He now has 39 of those. Only the man sitting in the third base dugout, Ricky Henderson, has more. There's Ricky. He has 77 of those leadoff jobs. Harold Baines hit a homer. Pat Rapp made it stand up with seven shutout innings. And Jason Johnson out of the pen through a scoreless eighth inning. The Oriole fans were loving life. Some good work. But then the BS showed up. Yeah, the deadly blown save takes a bite out of Mike Timlin who gets tagged by Jay Buhner right here. A two-run shot, and uh-oh, fans are going, here we go again. Tie game to all cost. Pat Rapp a win he deserved. But tonight, the Birds overcame the BS. Bottom of the ninth, Cal Ripken at the plate after an Albert Bell base hit. Driven that deep left. See you later. Yeah, that's a ball game winner. Cal takes Jose Mesa out. Birds with a 4-2 walk-off win. Here's Cal. The win has been hard to come by, uh, for sure. Um, doesn't mean any of us aren't trying. We're, we're going out there plugging as hard as we can. And as a group, it just seems like it's not run, going, going well for us. But uh, uh, it's a long season, and we're going to keep plugging away. And it, it, was a, it was a good win, you know, definitely. Any win at this point is a good win, but tonight it was good to come back and get that win. All right, way to go, Cal. A couple other baseball notes in Boston. Man bites dog, uh, Pedro Martinez. Uh, lost to the Blue Jays 3-2 to two in Chicago. Roger Clemens tagged for six earned runs in seven innings. White Sox lead the Yankees 8-2 in the ninth. And Mark McGuire hit number 19 tonight. Cardinals over the Marlins 10-3. A couple of state lacrosse championships on the line tonight. Let's go to UMBC. Girls 3-A, 4-A title game. Severna Park and Liberty. Late in the game, Severna Park up 4-3. Not now. Liberty ties it up. Becky Trombo ties it at 4 the game went into four overtimes in the fourth overtime. Holly Noga right there ends the marathon. That's the winner. Congratulations, Severna Park Falcons. Girls take their fifth state championship in four overtimes. Let's go to the boys game now. Severna Park boys trying to complete the championship daily double as they met Delaney. Delaney Lions on the attack. Brian Will scores. He had 40 goals coming into the game. And it's Wills again, three goals, one assist. Delaney wins the state boys title, 10-8, the final score. NBA tonight, the Pacers beat the Knicks game one of that series. That'll do it. Stan, Mary Beth. All right, Scotty, thank you. And we'll be right back.
Volkswagen owners really love their cars. So we're not surprised that the GTI was ranked most appealing car in its class by J.D. Power & Associates. Simple and accessible plans for everybody. That's Verizon Wireless. And right now, there's never been a better time to join in because people coast to coast are discovering single rate. On plans as low as $35 a month, get 150 minutes with no long distance or roaming charges. Then get connected with an AudioVox 9000 phone. Hurry into a Verizon Wireless location near you or call 1-888-466-4646. Verizon Wireless. Join in. The only thing that comes close to the thrill of driving a new Dodge is the fun of saving on one. Now do both during the Dodge Drive into Summer event, where you can immediately reduce your Stratus down payment with this generous cash allowance, or save over $3,900 thanks to low long-term financing. The thrill of driving, the fun of saving, and your timing couldn't be better. During the Dodge Drive into Summer event, going on now at your friendly Dodge dealer. Down at headquarters. The lieutenant was trying to nail Miles. We know you did it. The proof is in these cans. Every one fresh as a brand new 20. That did it. Those are aluminum cans, lieutenant. And aluminum cans keep their fizz for years. So anybody could have put those there. Months ago, I sprung Miles and we headed to Bistro Francais for a root beer. Next time, buy cans. Who's going to argue with that? CRV Special Edition. It comes with real-time four-wheel drive, leather-trimmed seats, a stereo cassette with in-dash CD player, and more. No wonder it's a value that's hard to find. Howdy. Of course, you could go to your Honda dealer. The CRV Special Edition from Honda. Finally tonight, archaeologists have made a fascinating discovery. A tomb of a once powerful Egyptian official is brought back to the surface after 2,000 years. The tomb was covered with hieroglyphics, and inside was a mummified man resting in a finely carved sarcophagus. The mummy is said to be the mayor of the Baharia Oasis region in Egypt, an important man who thought of himself as the pharaoh's equal. The tomb will not be open to the public. Mm. All right, we have a winner in our Watch and Win contest. Leonard Rainey, you're $1,000 richer tonight. Congratulations. All right, way to go. And that's going to do it for us tonight at 11 o'clock. I'm Stan Stovall. I'm Mary Beth Morris, and we hope to see you back here tomorrow at the Inner Harbor Live at 5. Good night, everyone. right now. ABC. From WMAR-TV, Baltimore, this is News Channel 2 Weekend. Gunmen wearing masks surprised two employees of a scanned furniture outlet in Columbia. They try to rob the workers and end up shooting them. Good evening, I'm Sherry Jones. And I'm Terry Owens. Thanks for joining us, everybody. The attempted robbery and shootings happened just before 6 o'clock tonight in a fairly isolated area of Columbia. And as News Channel 2's John Rossin reports, it was one of the wounded workers who managed to call 911. The two employees were exiting the store when they were accosted outside by the suspects and forced back inside. Uh, the suspects told them to lay on the floor, uh, and asked where the cash register was. The cash register had been emptied. They asked where the safe was, and one of the employees told them that they had already set the burglar alarm, and about that time, the alarm went off. The gunman demanded money, got none, and opened fire. Police say the bullet struck the two employees of the scan outlet, one in the chest and one in the back. But one of them managed to call 911, and from shock trauma, detectives gleaned this description of the attackers from the victim just before surgery. Two black males, both wearing dark shirts, 